Hey, welcome back to That 70s Card Show. I'm your host, John Keating, and it is late September 2021. This is a special edition, recapping my trip to the Philly Card Show uh, this past weekend in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. A little background, I spent the last few weeks traveling, three weeks to be exact. Um, had the pleasure of interviewing Mike Summer at the Industry Summit in Las Vegas this, uh, I guess, two weeks ago. Uh Three weeks of uh, kind of hunting and uh, searching for cards. Went to a couple of stores in Vegas, could not find anything uh, appropriate for my tastes. Uh, got home, uh, took a red eye home on a Saturday evening, fully intending not to go to the Philly card show, uh, to spend time with my wife and my family. And, uh, well, things just don't quite turn out the way uh, we expect sometimes. Uh Mail day. So after two weeks of of being home and three weeks of not buying cards, I ended up having two cards sent to me that I had purchased a long time ago. They were just two fifty three tops commons, um, Ray Murray and Jerry Coleman, or Joe Coleman, I believe. And uh, yeah, I mean, I needed them. Didn't cost me much, so it was fun seeing that. I had made arrangements to uh, possibly purchase a nineteen nineties basketball card collection from a gentleman and uh, we agreed on a price not too much uh, probably about I don't know maybe a thousand or two two thousand cards and you know 75 bucks saw some Michaels in there some Shaq Stadium Club that kind of thing so my goal was to get home catch a quick nap spend some time with my wife and perhaps drive out to meet this fella quick transaction Uh, I was told by my wife when I got home that she had plans to to go to a um, an arboretum with some friends. So guess what? The Philly card show was 15 minutes from my house and I didn't have an excuse not to go anymore. So I was supposed to meet the gentleman at three o'clock, one o'clock. I headed over to the Philly card show to see what was going on with, um, kind of my 70, 71 and 72 lists. I decided that that's what I needed to concentrate on, uh, finishing before I dabbled anywhere else. So uh, that kind of went sideways. I'll explain that in a few minutes. Uh, Valley Forge Casino hosts the Philly show, and uh, that's where I got my start in uh, the business that I am in. I'm in the entertainment business. I do lighting, so I worked there as a stagehand the week after I got out of high school, and it's kind of where it all started right there in that building. I met my wife there, who was a performer in the show, and the rest is history. Here I am many years later um, attending card shows, uh, back where I started my professional career and my essentially where my family started. Uh, card shows in Valley Forge, King of Prussia, have a long history. Uh, they were normally held at the George Washington Motor Inn, which was a bit of a dump. And it, um, there was a couple of those. There was one in Fort Washington. There was one in Well Grove and one in King of Prussia. Long gone, all of them, thank goodness. Uh, then they moved to the Holiday Inn, which is kind of neat, right near the King of Prussia Mall. That building's still standing. I'm not quite sure what kind of hotel it is right now, but it's still there. Anyway, um, so I roll in, pay my 10 bucks. It's about 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the afternoon, and, um, you know, kind of dead because people are starting to pack up and stuff like that. So I head around, uh, do a quick lap, which I do. And uh, I found a couple, uh, Bart and his wife out of New York, who uh, last time they were in at the Philly show, I believe in June, bought a lot of 71 tops from them. So uh, again, my goal was to finish out 71 tops, 72 tops, and perhaps 70 tops, or at least put a dent in those two. I had 31 cards left in 71. And um, well, now I have 10, so I was able to get a lot of cards, uh, a lot of uh, high numbers, uh, they're, they're good enough to work with you, those two. And they have, they have options. So, um, you know, they have a $12 version, an $8 version, or they, their stickers would say that they have half off specials, all that stuff. So, uh, you know, bought a stack of cards. I think it was, uh, since I had 31, I, you know, I bought 20 of them. A couple of highlights were the Boog Pal that I've been looking for, for a long time. Um, Boog seems to have looted me in a 71 form, found him. Uh, Richie Allen in a Dodgers uniform, pretty darn cool there, right? Uh, he had been a um, 
a Philly previous to that, and uh, possibly a, a Dod, an Angel, I'm not sure, but he had a Dodger there going to play with the White Sox and back to the Phillies. Uh, the big banger that I found was this, um, forgive me for my glare, uh, the 71 Dusty Baker, Don Baylor, and Tom Pachurik special. I uh, kicked myself a little bit for waiting so long. I was a um, Carly Stremski collector first. Then uh, number two on my list was Reggie Smith, but Don Baylor was number three. I had a uh, an affinity for Don Baylor when I was younger. Thought he was a really cool player. So, of course, I waited until I was 53 uh, and paid maximum um, price on that thing. You know, I probably could have gotten it for a buck back in 1979, but here I am in 2021, and I, I got a good deal on it. Um, probably paid half of what it uh, lists for, but still way uh, more than I should have. Um, <clears throat> so with that done, like I said, I had, I think I bought 21 cards, So and I have 10 left in the 71 set. So with that said, uh, I moved on, started looking around for other stuff. The only thing left in 71 for me is essentially commons. I think Vita Blue is the biggest name in that bunch, but essentially all commons at this point. So I'm moving around the show. Again, uh, these guys are packing up, getting out of here, long weekend in Valley Forge. Hopefully the show is a success for them. And I came upon a bin. Um, I came upon a bin on my way out that I, uh, for some reason, it caught my eye. So I had a bunch of 50s, uh, mostly 60s, 70s, even 80s, 90s stuff in it. But mostly it was uh, 60s stuff. And I'm always looking to buy in bulk uh, commons uh, from that era. So uh, I stopped and talked to a gentleman named Herb from Virginia, older gentleman. He was with his wife as well. I said, hey, man, what do you want for that bin right there? I'm sure you don't want to take it home with you. Herb stopped in his tracks. He had a stack of Schmidt rookies, a stack of uh, rookie, Ricky Henderson rookies, stuff like that he was getting ready to put away and uh, pack up and looked at it for a few minutes, and he said, uh, again, it was a dollar dollar bin box and um, st stared at it for about, oh, I would say 30 seconds, which felt, which felt like five minutes. And he said, I'll give you 40 cents. I'll take 40 cents on the dollar. So I moved over to his showcases and saw a couple things there that uh, might interest me and um, started talking about the other stuff, some of the stuff in the showcases. And um, for some reason, I'm on a, a Mickey Mantle kick lately. Um, I purchased um, three mantles at the Dallas Card Show a little while back. I purchased another mantle, a raw form, off of Twitter a while back, and uh, I pretty much had uh, a lot of the other ones left over from my uh, a little bit of a splurge I did in the late 90s on eBay. Um, so those slabs are low-numbered slabs from PSA. So I started looking around, and, you know, interested in the 69 mantle. Uh, that would complete my 1960s run of Mickey Mantles. Uh, asked the gentleman what he wanted. He had a four. He had a couple fives. And uh, he told me what the prices were. You know, they were... Maybe a little high, but it's Sunday at the show, so uh, maybe we get a little deal. Uh, then I started uh, looking around and saw a couple other things there. I saw the, uh, at this point, I need the 69, I need the 57, I need the 56, and I need that 52, uh, which um, I guess may elude me forever, but we'll see what happens there. So uh, I saw the 56 Mano, and I saw the 50. Three man on. I said, uh, "What are you asking for those?" We talked a little bit about that, and then uh, I made him. Uh, I made him quote me a price for all three of those cars. So we're talking about a '69 Mantle uh, PSA five. It was a '56 Mantle SGC three and a '53 Tops Mantle SGC one. So uh, he he kind of. He added them up in his head, and he didn't didn't give him much of a haircut when he first um, mentioned price. So I knocked him down a little bit, knocked him down, knocked him down, um, and he uh, we came to an agreement on a price. But uh, one of the stipulations was that he throw in that. Um, I originally asked him for the price for the PSA four sixty nine. Uh, I said I gave him a dollar amount, but he had to throw in the five instead of the four PSA, and he had to throw in that box of uh, one dollar um, commons that he had at the end of his booth. He hand and hawed. Uh, we agreed on a price, and needless to say, um, walked out of there with a couple cards 
that I really enjoy. So uh, got the 69 mantle here, yellow letters, of course, uh, white letters. You know, it, white letters are cool, but but uh, I just needed the base set, so I got the yellow letters, and uh, maybe I'll get the white letters someday, right? So that's my 69 done. Uh, here's the 56 tops, and this is uh, kind of inspired by James from Elite Hunters who picked uh, this card up at the Dallas show, and I couldn't stop looking at it when we were seated next to each other at the table. Uh, so I got myself a, a, a 56 mantle SG3, SGC3, but that's that's enough for me. And then the coup de gras obviously, would be the uh, uh, the 53, um, 53 mantle. Okay, it's an SGC1. Looks really good to me. Uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of a paper loss on the back, but I, I can I can handle that. It's a good looking card. Probably be uh, without obviously without the paper loss, probably be another two grades higher, but that's okay. I can live with that. Um, looks good where I'm from. Uh, so that leaves me with the 57 and the 52 mantles to complete the base set. Probably not going to happen, but you know a gal can dream. Um, so let's get back to. Something interesting here, that dollar box, right? Again, I like to buy in bulk. So um, I was kind of excited about that. I mean, the slabs in the in the 71s, I've been hunting forever. I know what I'm looking for there. Very thankful and grateful to get these mantles. But what really intrigued me was this uh, box with over 1,000 60s and 50s uh, commons in it. So uh, I got home, sorted some things out, and uh, this is kind of what I ended up here, right? It's a... Uh, a huge pile of 62s, pretty big pile of 58s. So I would say, I don't know, close to a thousand 62s, maybe 500 58s, and then you know some 61s as you can see, and a couple hundred 61s, about 163s, 59s, 60s, and then we go all the way up 64, 65, 66, a couple 67s, only two of those, and then uh, so on. Uh, and then there's a pile of uh, various things from essentially 76 up to the 90s, but uh. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Uh, I even ended up with a Carlton, a 73 Carlton in there. So uh, building up my 60s and 50s uh, sets, pretty important to me to buy bulk like that. I mean, we can pay retail all we want, but, you know, essentially I got, um, <clears throat> I think it ended up being 13 car 1,300 cards thrown into the deal um, on top of um, – the three mantles, which is pretty cool because we like to sort, we like to uh, stack and all that stuff. So they've all been logged in the Beckett organizer. Um, a lot of duplicates, obviously 62 ended up with a lot of duplicates, but that's okay. Uh, the value is still there. I can always uh, trade those or sell those on Twitter or eBay if I, I need to. But I would say out of all those cars there, about half of them were uh, not duplicates going into my system. I even... Uh, even the 72s, I ended up getting about a dozen high number 72s that I um, that I wasn't looking for, but ended up uh, being able to fill out about a dozen of those guys. So we all know how hard it is to find high number 72 tops. So uh, so that's that. It's uh, again, it's the Philly Card Show, a uh, great show in my area, about 15 minutes from my house. So I'll, I'll show you a little picture here. They had. Uh, all sorts of Philly athletes there. Um, Ronald Cunningham, uh, Colin Gillespie, uh, Dwight Gooden was there, Iverson was there, Danny Jackson, McNabb, Mickey Morandini, Mulholland, Joe Pepitone, Placido Blanco, Michael Vick, Mitch Williams. And then uh, Bobby Shantz seems to be a, uh, a fixture on that show. He's always there. I have a lot of Bobby Shantz cards. Uh, boy, I, I hope he's... Uh, I hope he's around for the next one because I should probably get some of those cards signed. Uh, a lot of Bobby Shantz, like I said. Ricky Batalico and it looks like Don Money. So uh, good show. Uh, you know, not the Dallas show. It's not as big as the Dallas card show, but they do a good job there with the show, obviously, with the autograph guests. They do a wonderful job. It's in a great location. It's Boy, it's got a casino right there. So uh, I heard stories of people winning at the tables and coming right down and blowing it on cardboard uh, to each his own, right? So, uh, yeah, that's that. Um, my recap of the Philly show. And, um, you know, ended up, oddly enough, at 2.30 I left the Philly show uh, to drive out 
to meet uh, in Well Grove, oddly enough, to, to meet the uh, gentleman I was going to buy the cards from. He never showed up. So uh, imagine that. I went out there. Had I not, you know, had I gone out there and uh, without stopping at the show, it probably would have been a wasted day. But, you know, the day was, uh, I was, I guess the day started out with me just trying to enjoy my two 1953 Tops Commons that I got through the mail and perhaps um, looking forward to getting some basketball cards, which I'm not into from the 90s, and turned out to be a uh, bonanza uh, for me. And uh, just never know how it's going to turn out when you go to a card show, right? So that's it. I appreciate everybody uh, stopping in on this quick hit. Uh, you know, as always, uh, enjoy your collection and enjoy collecting. Thanks.